How do you judge whether a TV show is successful? Sure, critical acclaim and popularity are factors, but you know what's even more important? Cold hard cash. Today's video is all about the most successful TV franchises ever based on how much money they earned, and I'll tell you now, this list is crazy. Whether it's through a TV syndication, merchandising deals, or just being part of a larger franchise, there are so many ways a TV show can earn money that you might not have thought about before. So don't touch that dial because we're getting started right now. Star Trek is one of the cornerstones for pop culture, and it has been since the original 1966 TV series. I'm sure they knew they had something special on their hands when the show first aired, but there's just no way Gene Roddenberry could predict just how much cultural impact the series has had over the last 60 years. And if we focus just on television for a second, it's clear that the franchise has earned an incredible amount. It's reportedly generated over $2.3 billion in TV revenue alone. But that's because the show built something special. I mean, it isn't just the OG Star Trek TV show. You also have Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, Discovery, Picard, as well as the upcoming Strange New Worlds, and that doesn't even count the animated shows. And that's just scratching the surface. Let's not forget that Star Trek has had three different successful movie franchises, as well as all the merchandise that's associated with it. Collectively, the Star Trek brand has generated over $10.6 billion. Even the classically logical Spock would be surprised by that number. Okay, I know all the talk nowadays is how Grey's Anatomy keeps breaking records with its new seasons, but can we take a minute to appreciate the OG King medical primetime show? Of course, I'm talking about ER. To say this show was popular would be an understatement. It won 23 Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Drama Series, as well as racked up 124 nominations, and it was consistently in the top-rated and most-watched shows every season. Its most-watched episode, where a young George Clooney rescued a kid from a storm drain during a storm, racked up 48 million views when it aired. So after I tell you all that, you shouldn't be that surprised to discover the show earned over $3 billion in revenue. And that's really impressive for a show that didn't launch a franchise or film series. If ER was that popular today, you would expect to see spin-offs like ER Miami, ER First Responders, ER Astronauts, ER Vets, etc. All populating NBC schedule. Actually, why haven't they rebooted yet? How did it make so much money? Well, it's things like charging $135,000 per 30-second ad spot in its final season. That certainly helped. Game of Thrones will go down in history for two things. One, it will always be known as the television show of the 2010s. The way it captured the zeitgeist and slowly grew to a worldwide phenomenon is truly one of the most impressive things a television show has ever done. There won't be another show quite like Game of Thrones. But then, of course, it will also be remembered as the show that completely dropped from people's minds after an incredibly frustrating final season. How quickly the world cooled on TV's most popular show is also something truly fascinating to study. Anyways, let's talk about all the coin that it made. Well, when you're the most watched TV show in the world, you can expect it to rake in more cash than the Iron Bank of Bravos knows what to do with. It's earned over $4 billion in TV revenue, which is seriously impressive given that it didn't air on primetime, but rather HBO. The show certainly helped the network earn more subscriptions. I wonder how many people ordered HBO whenever a new season of Game of Thrones started up and then canceled whenever the season ended. I'd bet a good amount. Of course, the brand will only continue to make money as HBO has about 15 spin-offs in development. Plus, when George R.R. Martin releases the next book in the series in like 2045, that will result in another big influx of cash for the brand. There's a naked woman across the street. <laughs> Where? Can you believe a show about nothing is worth so gosh darn much? When talking about the most famous sitcoms of all time, one of the biggest that will always be brought up is Seinfeld. The show, starring Jerry Seinfeld, Jason Alexander, Julia Louise Dreyfus, and Michael Richards, as four pretty terrible people caught in the most awkward of situations, has earned more than $4 billion in TV revenue. As Larry David would say, that's pretty, pretty, pretty good. It was just a staple of 90s comedy, and the series finale, which, like a lot of popular shows' endings, is still pretty polarizing to this day, and yet it was watched by over 76 million people. Yeah, Seinfeld was a major cash cow. A big part of how it continues to earn a ridiculous amount of money is because of syndication rights. Go channel surfing sometime, you know, if you still have cable and not just all streaming services, and chances are you'll find some old Seinfeld episode running. Hopefully it's the one where George pretends he's a marine biologist. That one's my favorite. The sea was angry that day, my friends. You'll always have your feel-good sitcoms in syndication earning money, like some of the others on this list. 
But I think Seinfeld will outlast all of them because it offers a slightly different perspective than your average safer sitcom. It just has a slight more bite to it. Not much, but enough to keep it on the air for many years to come and earn even more money. Well, if the Friends reunion on HBO Max didn't make it clear, Friends was a huge deal. It's the ultimate comfort sitcom for a lot of people and still stands as one of the most popular sitcoms of all time. Come on, be honest, either you or someone you know has binge watched a chunk of episodes ever since they appeared on HBO Max, right? If the answer is no, then I think someone is lying to you. Anyways, just how much did the show, which was pitched as the time in your life when your friends or your family actually earn? Well, due to its insane popularity at the time and its incredible syndication deals, Friends has earned over $5.22 billion in revenue. All that just for a show about six friends hanging out in a coffee shop most of the time. Wowza. I think with the recent once in a lifetime reunion, that number is only going to continue to grow as more people either discover it or just binge it again on HBO Max. Now, excuse me for a second. I have to go watch Ross try to wiggle his way out of a pair of tight leather pants. Are you ready, kids? Who lives in a pineapple and makes lots of money? Wait, that's not how it goes. Well, it should. SpongeBob SquarePants is a kid's show that follows a sponge hanging out in Bikini Bottom with his friends. And if you haven't heard of it, I'd call you Patrick Starr, since you've obviously been living under a rock for the past 20 years. Hi, Patrick. Oh, wait, I'm Patrick. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> If you're watching this video, chances are you grew up right around the time when SpongeBob was popular and you've probably reached the point where you question why they keep making new SpongeBob content when it's clearly not as good as the OG days. Well, as Mr. Krabs would say, the answer is money. The brand has earned Nickelodeon over $15 billion overall thanks to merchandising and licensing. And that's pretty amazing giving it started as just a TV show without any pre-existing source material. SpongeBob built his empire of cash all on his own. Way to go, Sponge Dude. There was a song that played in the 13th season of The Simpsons that went, They'll never stop the Simpsons. Have no fears, we've got stories for years. And it's a funny joke at the time. But now, as we approach its 33rd season, that song may actually be literal. And while I don't think there's anyone who will argue that The Simpsons is still as good as its heyday, the secret is, that doesn't matter at all. At this point, Fox, I mean, Disney, can keep pumping out season after season of mediocre Simpsons episodes while having a fight with the cast every few years about payment, because The Simpsons isn't just a TV show anymore, it's a whole brand. Overall, the show has generated over $15.6 billion in profit, and with things like Simpsons Land and Universal and all that sweet, sweet Simpsons merchandise, it's going to keep making Mr. Burns' level of money. Excellent. I think not even the genius of Sheldon Cooper could have foreseen the monstrous growth and popularity of the Big Bang Theory. I think every decade has that one sitcom that lords above all the others, and for better or for worse, the 2010s were dominated by the Big Bang Theory. Its premise, like a lot of sitcoms, wasn't that groundbreaking. Two nerds live across the hall from a hot girl. Would it last? Well, fast forward 12 years and over $6.57 billion in revenue, and the answer is obvious. It was one of TV's most watched shows during its run, and now it continues to make all sorts of money thanks to syndication. And let's be honest, if Jim Parsons had changed his mind and decided to keep making the show, there's a good chance it would still be on the air right now. Alright, this one is a little tricky, but I had to include it on this list. Star Wars is one of the most profitable brands of all time. So far, it's collected over $68 billion thanks to all the movies, the tie-in materials, and all that sweet, sweet merchandise. But let's talk about the TV side of Star Wars for a second. The last numbers to be reported for Star Wars TV earnings was about $280 million, which is chump change compared to other shows on this list. But this number also came way before The Mandalorian. And although it's hard to fully assess how much revenue The Mandalorian has made, I point to things like the introduction of Baby Yoda, which helped increase Hasbro toy sales an astounding 70% after Baby Yoda merch went on sale. That should count toward its earnings. Plus, with Disney Plus fully invested in Star Wars TV shows for the foreseeable future, their TV revenue is only going to grow. Pokemon is the most successful franchise ever. It has over $100 billion in profit. Its international appeal, as well as its presence in all sorts of different mediums like manga, TV, movies, merchandise, video games, etc., all add to its profits. But I just wanted to mention that a big chunk of America's obsession with the franchise is thanks to the OG TV show that aired a dub version in the US starting in 1997. 
Be honest, do you think it would be as popular around the world if it wasn't for that TV show? I just don't think so. So I wanted to give a special shout out. Now, excuse me, I haven't played Pokemon Go in a while and I want to check it out again. This list doesn't mention the MCU TV shows yet, but it's only a matter of time. The way the MCU is focused on building out their television output for years to come will only add to that franchise's running total of a gazillion dollars and counting. 